So here I'm going to show you how to take the 12 monthly observations within a year in a time series and take the average, basically turning a monthly time series into an annual time series. Now you could do this with a package in R, but I'm deliberately doing it sort of manually so that you can kind of see the steps involved, okay? Now I'm going to use my real uh, oil price data that I use. I pull a data set from my website and look at it. Um, here it starts 1 slash 1 slash 80. That's January 1980. I've got nominal West Texas intermediate prices. I've got PPI for the price index. I'm going to make the real index. I'm going to look at the first 14 observations. You can see that it's 12 months per year. It starts in 1980. It goes down to 1981 and so forth. But where it ends, it ends partway through 2016. So I'm going to only do the averages up to 2015 to get the whole year. Now, one thing to look at is, first of all, if we're going to cut each year into 12 months, and we're going to run a loop to take the average over those 12 months. So how do you get those observations? Well, you take 1 to 12, 13 to 24, 25 to 36. Basically, um, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start from I equals 1, all right, and then I'm going to back it up. I'm going to subtract 1, so you get 0, and then add 1 again. So you take I is 1 to the end, and then you, t for, you start with I minus 1, and then you add 1 at the end. Now, the, the, at the end of the 12, it's simply 1 times 12, 2 times 12, so forth. So the ending observation, if I go from i equals 1, 2, 3, is simply um, 1 times 12, 2 times 12, and so forth. Now, I call it P for 12 periods. And like I said, I'm going to cut it up into 12-month slots, run an average, and then I'm going to make an annual series from that. Now, how do I find the end? Well, I could look at it and say it ends in 2015, but what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the number of rows. I call it L1, and I divide by 12, and I see that it's 36.75 years. So it's 36 full years. Now, to cut off the partial year, I'm simply going to take what's kind of related to the modulus. I use this code here. I'm going to drop the partial year, and I get the integer 36. Okay. Now, to get my, tw uh, my 12 monthly averages, or, or average of 12 months, I'm going to do it this way. Now, I'm writing it sort of generic so that there's no um, specific code that, that has to be changed. Uh, I'm going to call my series series, and it's going to be simply the column RWTI, Real West Texas Intermediate. P is 12 for the 12 months. And like any loop, I'm going to make a null series, and I'm going to append through row binding each new value to the end. Right? So I make the null series, and then for i, 1 to length, that's going to be 36, but I call it length, so that can be changed. And remember, one reason to make it generic is that you can change your code if you need to. You get four quarters in here. Maybe you have different countries that are stacked up. You can basically, you don't have to change every, every instance. You simply call it length, and then you never have to change it again. Now, I'm going to make y data, that's simply my yearly data, and that's going to be this code that's going to start at 0, right? And then it's going to add 1 here, so it goes from 1 to 12, and so forth. So this is going to go 1 to 36, and it's going to basically make that start observation and end observation. They're all going to be 12 months long. I take the mean of each 12 months. I'm going to call it y average for yearly average. And then again, for, for the series new, it starts out empty, but I'm going to take that value and append it to the bottom, and eventually I'll have 36 new observations. All right? So run the loop, and then finally at the end, I change it to customize it and call it average RWTI. You can see here there's no years, but these are all average values. Now, just to get a sense of it, I'm going to do a time series plot of the original monthly series, and that's the oil price over time. My annual series is rougher, right? It's got fewer observations. It's actually a little smoother. It's got fewer movements. It looks less detailed because, again, it's only 36 observations, but it does look similar. It is the same values. Now, how do I get the years? There's going to be an easy way and a hard way. Easy way is I just look at it. I can make a repeat, you know, repeat a series. This could be 1980. And it's going to add those observations. If I take 1979 plus 1 to the end, it's going to be 1980 to 2015. That's pretty straightforward. Or the hard way is, is using the actual numbers there, which means whatever data series I have, this can be, I don't have to change too much code. So first of all, I'm only going to take the 36 full years. So I'm going to subset the data from 1 to 12 times the length. So that gives me the, you know, the years times 12 months and only the column I want. Then I'm going to use string split. And remember how the years were all 1 slash 1 slash 1980? Well, I'm going to split it to get to separate out the year. Now, this is a list, so it's going to be separate. I'm going to have to bring this list, and I'll show you the type, and I'm going to reduce it into a data frame here. And again, this works specifically for the data I have, but again, I never mention 1980. I never mention any specific things. This is basically generic. Now, I turn it into a data frame, 
and I have almost what I need here. Here's April 2007. All I need is this column here, so I'm just going to take the column. And then, because I have 12 instances of every year, I'm only going to take the unique values. It's just going to keep one instance per year. So, here I have it. And I can show you here, now it's in quotes, but here's my list of years. And again, it's generic. It is not specific to the data that I have. Now, how do I add the years? I can remove the quotes, only the column I want, and now I have the, all the years. This could be rounded, but I haven't done it. But this is the average values for every 12 months within each calendar year. Now, finally, I can plot it. And I'm going to make it a line type. It's going to have a header, and it's going to remove the X labels. And this is a little better version of the graph. This is the real oil price of WTI. So again, I took this data set, I subset it every 12 months within a year, took the average using a loop, and then made that average into a time series with a year value and was able to plot that.